This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Nokia N8, Nokia's first Symbian 3 major smartphone for the United States market. This is sold unlocked, which means without a contract, so it's going to cost you $549. The good news is it's a pentaband 3G phone, so it works overseas. It works with T-Mobile US 3G and AT&T, making this the perfect phone for people who switch carriers or travel frequently. The phone has a 3.7 inch display. It's running at Nokia's usual high end, slightly unusual resolution of 640 by 360 pixels, which is pretty widescreen, obviously. You can see it has an accelerometer here. This is the three page home screen, which reminds us a little bit of the Nokia N900. In fact, lots about this does, and that's a good thing. It's optimized for touch, for example, whereas Symbian S60 5th edition was really just a glom of touchscreen features added on top of regular Symbian of old, and it didn't work very well with touch. So we're on the first screen here, and you can have a different background for each one, as you can see here. There's lots of widgets. I have Reuters News up here, a calendar plug-in widget, music player, quick links to mailboxes for Avimail, Yahoo, Microsoft, Hotmail, and so on. And another screen here with even more widgets, which we're going to take a look at in greater detail. We'll look at them in landscape mode here. You've got Link to E Entertainment Network, National Geographic, CNN, and Movie Teasers. Go back to this mode here. This is a touchscreen phone. There is no hardware keyboard in this model. Nokia does have models that do have that. We have front-facing camera here and the real showstopper, which is the 12 megapixel autofocus camera with Carl Zeiss lens and very large flash on the back making this not just the highest megapixel rated camera phone that's available in the U.S., but really does take the best pictures. To accommodate the lens, you can see it does stick out over here. And in general, the, the phone has a, a unique design. It's kind of torpedo-like. You either like it or you don't like it, I suppose. It's not exactly my favorite phone design in terms of aesthetics, but it's solidly built and it's an aluminum casing. It, it's, it's a well-made phone, certainly. So you've got squared off ends at the top and the bottom. This is your HDMI port, and an adapter is included, and these are the usual fiddly, hard-to-pull-off kind of things. So you've got a micro HDMI port there. There's a 3.5mm stereo headphone jack, power button. On the sides here, this is where your micro SD card slot goes, and your SIM card micro USB port right here. Notice there is no way to get to the battery. And on this side we've got the large camera button. You can press that to launch the camera app and then halfway press to focus and then press all the way to shoot. Let's do screen lock, unlock, and the very large volume keys. And one more thing down here, we've got this button which is really your application key. You press that to bring up your palette of applications. You can press it again to dis go back to the home screen when you're in any application. As you'll notice here, Symbian version 3 looks a lot like the Symbian of old. In terms of the icon styles are very similar. It's, it's something you can feel at home with, even though it's a big leap forward for the Symbian operating system. It's not going to seem unfamiliar. Got the applications folder here with even more apps. And no, you don't have to use those nasty little scroll bars on the side. You can just grab with your finger. This is a capacitive multi-touch AMOLED display. Excellent Nokia finally joining modern phones there. And it's very sharp, very vivid, very bright. No complaints at all. For applications, we've got things like the photo editor and the video editor. It's cool to have those on board. We have both an FM radio that works with the headset as an antenna and an FM transmitter, so you can use this with your car. So YouTube players, we'll take a look at. This does have flashlight. Nokia Maps. Variety of tools and settings. Access to your email. Software update online. Notes. And the office suite. And here we have the usual contacts calendar, the WebKit-based web browser, photo viewer, Avi Store. Now, it's interesting, I've actually downloaded a bunch of apps from the Avi Store. You think this is a pretty new operating system, there won't be much available, but there are 5th edition apps, from what I can tell, that I've downloaded before and installed, and they work fine. Things that I was using on my N900 work pretty well. Occasionally you will get those side scroll bars that are required, but mostly things work well. We have an interesting app here, it's called Web TV. If you take a look at it, it's just quick links to CNN video, National Geographic video E. Link to the Obvious Store to get more videos and movie teasers. We're going to take a look at that in a minute. 
music player is right here. It's a pretty nice looking music player. Obviously, like everything else on the phone, it works in portrait and landscape mode. And you have album art here, and you can scroll through it in very Apple-like fashion. Wonderful lawsuit's going to come up there. I want to play something? Just tap on it. Really loud, loud, loud speaker on this thing. And though you can't tell from this track, it's quite good quality. And again, you can hit that button just to get out of there, or you can actually manually exit an application if you want to manage memory. This has 256 megs of RAM, which doesn't sound like a super lot by modern-day smartphone standards. Uh, Nokia and Symbian are very good at running a phone on very little memory, but uh, given the fact that I've had about six heavy apps running at once and seen it get laggy occasionally, it probably could still stand to have more. It's a 680 megahertz ARM 11 single-core CPU with 2D and 3D acceleration. And it has 16 gigs of internal storage, and obviously that micro SD card slot we pointed out to you. Has Bluetooth 3.0, Wi Fi 802.11, B, G, and N, and obviously the GPS with Avi Maps, which includes free navigation for life. Okay, let's take a look at some of the features here. You notice I have a widget here for Facebook. I tap on that. Here is the Facebook application that comes with the unit which looks like most Facebook applications you've seen that are full-featured. It's quite good. Loads of images. You can tap on links, all that kind of thing. You can take a look at your calendar, look at invites, and other things. And you can integrate other social networking with the phone as well, with and without widgets. Here we have shortcuts. These are the ones that are here by default. You can, of course, edit your home screen, but you've got shortcuts to making calls, your, your contacts, Avi Store, Nokia Maps, this is a wizard to help you set up your email and various other things, the web browser, the photo viewer, and email. Let's take a look at that web browser. And there are a bunch of bookmarks, and we've bookmarked our own site, so we'll tap on that. And you'll have the quick navigation stuff over here that disappears once the page is loaded and rendered. Right now we're using a T-Mobile SIM, so this is over T-Mobile's 3G network in the United States. It works just as well with an AT&T SIM. Once the page is loaded, you can scroll around, zoom, pinch in and out. Again, it's not quite as fast as the iPhone or an Android phone. We'd like to see a couple updates here to maybe improve this a bit more. The rendering itself is quite beautiful. And you can see we've even got flash ads running on the page without a problem. Scrolling speed is good. It's not super zippy, kind of inertia scrolling. Again, I'd like to see some updates to improve this further. We've seen this before on Nokia phones. You've got the little arrow keys, and that brings up that side navigation. So over here, you can tell it to go to a new URL or do a Google search. You can pick whether you want Bing or Google to be your default search provider, and you'll automatically get a search box whenever you put that up. You tap that, you get your full set of functions. Again, that's a lot like the N900. You can go to RSS feeds, settings, find keywords, reload the page, save a bookmark, send the URL, exit the browser, and stop. And then here's bookmark function again. So here we are in one of our review pages. This is with Samsung Fascinate on Verizon. And you can say that all sorts of advanced HTML things like tweet buttons and, and Facebook buttons work just fine on this. And since the phone does have flashlight, we're going to take a look at flashlight. We have a YouTube video embedded here, and you can see it right here. doesn't quite fit in the screen really very well, though. We hit the play button, and play, hopefully, the flash version of the video versus the mobile one. This could be a lot faster, and I find it's sometimes a little bit bulky, but there it goes. That's pretty good, actually. Here's the on-screen keyboard. It works really very well. And you can do like so to drag over the entire thing and type over it if you want to. And if you put it in portrait mode, it switches to a T9 style keyboard. When you're done entering a field, you just hit the green check mark. Now I'll take a quick look at the contacts. 
you can see I've only created one contact here and instead of my picture we've got a nice picture of a boat that was available to select from. This is what the contacts looks like. Similar to other smartphones, you've got just about every field in the world you can put in here just like Outlook. And if you hit on options you can edit it, send it as a business card since it happens to be my card and so on. And notice that it says user guide here. Most everywhere you are, there is an online user guide available for every application. So we're going to take a look at the gallery, the photo viewer, similar to what you've seen on Nokia phones before. And this is a this was once a, a beta application. It's pretty cool, really. This scrollable list of images. And it includes videos that you've taken with the camera that you have stored on it. It's quite fast. And these are camera images that we've taken with the 12 megapixel camera. They're quite good. The camera can also shoot 720p video. And if you're a photo buff, it's definitely good. I'll we'll just play a little bit of this video that we shot with the camera. And I did not have image stabilization turned on at the time, so you see some jerkiness in it because I was walking while taking this video. Stabilization is very effective to prevent that kind of bouncing around. Next we're going to take a look at the video playback capabilities. I have some very high quality videos on this. I'll check one out. Sounds very full, and volume is pretty good. One of the uh, fascinating things about working on this film is just the story. Frame rates are obviously so good, and so videos edge. in sync with audio too. Pretty good for a 600 me 680 megahertz CPU. Next, we're going to take a look at Nokia's Avi Maps. Something that's well loved in Europe where the turn by turn directions are much better and the mapping is much better in general in Europe than it is in the US. Now they've improved it quite a bit, I have to say, over even what was on the N900. But directions can still put you a little bit off your optimal route there. I mean, it's told me to take about a half a mile extra sometimes to get from one place to another. Pretty strange. However, if you ignore it and you go in a more expedient route, it does adjust and update to follow the route. But the idea with the GPS, of course, is you're asking for directions because you don't know where you're going, generally speaking. You have a My Position function. You can search. You can share your location. You can pinpoint favorites, similar to Google Maps. It's driving directions, walking directions, weather, events, Lonely Planet guides, trip advisor, and so on. So we're going to search. As an online-based service, it downloads all map information and directions over your data connection. So I've just searched for Starbucks. I'll pick one. And here's the map view, and you can see it has a nice POI location there with a little coffee cup for coffee. And you can search for all sorts of POIs that will indicate them on the map. For example, we've got a supermarket here. It's got a little apple on it. And auto repair places will have a wrench. And there is no zooming by pinch zooming, but you can use on-screen controls to zoom in if you wish. One thing to note with the Nokia is if you have a bunch of applications running and starting to slow down or you just want to switch between them quickly, you just press and hold this button right here, down here, and you can switch through everything that you've got running. And there are handy shortcuts on the home screen to change various things. For example, you can tap up here by the Wi-Fi indicator and it says Wi-Fi access points have been found. You don't actually have to go wandering through settings. Obviously, this is a reasonably large phone. It's still smaller than the T-Mobile Vibrant, though. Likewise, the Captivate, though it is thicker. Take a look at the box real quick and what you get with it. It's a nice presentation box. Blue box, despite the fact we have a gray unit. The phone is available right now just in gray in the United States, or black. 
But it is available overseas in a variety of very bright and attractive colors, and those should be coming to the United States. We open up the box. This is the part that the phone sits in. So inside the box, you've got the HDMI adapter. It goes from micro HDMI on the phone to a full-size HDMI. It's a US, micro USB to USB adapter for extension. Standard USB to micro USB. And the Nokia barrel-style charger. This happens to be the Euro one that we have, the Euro charger, but you would get US prongs on your phone. And the Nokia stereo headset with ear gels. When the phone screen is locked, this is the screen that you see. And you simply wake it up by doing that, or there's an on-screen unlock as well. There's a lot more features to the phone, so visit our website to read the full review. And this is the Nokia N8 Symbian 3 smartphone. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review.